So your test is next class. Yay. Oh, got to have my favorite student, good old Anne. What was that? I, I, you know what? If I ever have a student named Anne Sirkey, that'll just make my day. That would be wonderful. Uh, all vectors have both what and direction? Magnitude. I called that question zero because I was hoping that was like, hey, free marks. Do you have a copy of the quiz? Okay. And again, don't fill it out if you didn't do it. If you foolishly didn't do it, you can try it tonight, but you missed out on a chance to make some mistakes. Uh, cannonball is fired. All of you should underline mentally or actually horizontally. And in fact, I have to dulp here. i got to draw a little picture. So here is going to be my horizontal launch. And for some reason, I've been seeing some real nonsense in this. Uh, in the homework in lesson six, there was some horizontal from a cliff questions. And I had a number of students come to me and say, Mr. Duick, I do this, right? And they were trying to draw some kind of a triangle. No, no. Is this being launched at an angle with the horizontal, Misha? Then no components, no need to draw triangles. I, I will do a T table and use horizontal and vertical components to, to find the values, but I don't need to break this velocity up into any kind of weird components. It says it's got a velocity of 80, and it says the cliff is 20, 25 meters high. It wants me to find time of flight, and it wants me to find range. I am going to use a t-table now. Horizontally from a cliff, I think, is the easiest projectile mathematically. It's one of the trickier ones because you need to know some key concepts. What are my physics no-brainers, my friend? AX equals? AY equals? Good. What's the horizontal velocity? That's right from my picture, from what the question said. It's 80. And here's the first, here is the key to doing horizontally from a cliff. What's the initial vertical velocity? They didn't give it to me. They didn't need to. What is it? Zero. What's the most common mistake? Sean Kids put an 80 there. No, it's zero, which makes the math much nicer. This 25, vertical or horizontal? Vertical. If it was horizontal, I would put dx equals 25, and I would call it positive, because that way is forward. Vertical, I call it dy equals negative 25. Why negative? Because it ended up below from where we started. Which column do I know three things in? Vertical, I'm going to find time vertically. So part A says find time. I'm going to go T equals question mark. I think I can use this. What happened to the VIT? It's zero. I think I can use this. Times by two, divide by A square root. And if I crunch the numbers, 2 times negative 25 divided by negative 9.8 square root, going to be 2 point something. You get 2.25, I'll call it 2.26 seconds. Now if you got that, you get 2 out of 2. Otherwise, the way I would give out part marks is I would probably go... A half mark if I saw that. I would go a half mark if I saw that. I would go a half mark for the answer. I would probably give you a half mark if somewhere, if, if I saw that you had clued in that dy initial was zero, because to me that's the key to solving that question there. So 2.26 seconds. You don't have to put the answer there as long as you clearly indicated the answer. On the old provincial exams, which don't exist anymore, they used to always have an answer space at the bottom of the page. And my first year teaching Math 12, which had a provincial, I had my kids write the answer there. And when I went and marked provincial exams that summer, I realized what, how dumb I'd been. All the veteran teachers, what are you doing having them put the answer down there? Because it was amazing how many kids had the correct answer in their work 
and then copied it incorrectly into the answer box. And so from then on, I told all my kids, when you find the answer, quit right there, put a box around it. The, t the marker will find it, but it was amazing. I'll bet you one in 20 papers had what we called a transcription error. They had the correct answer, and then they copied it down. Maybe they swapped two numbers, or they missed a digit. Or, and I, that was the answer, unfortunately, I had to mark, and it cost them a half mark or a mark or something like that. B. They want me to find dx. So I know that ax equals 0. I know vx equals 80. And the nice thing is I know that time equals 2.26, although I'm not going to use the 2.26. I'm going to try and use my answer button, uh, 2.258, that there, since it's stored on my calculator. No half a t squared since a is 0. You got 181? For two marks there, I would give you probably one mark if I saw that. Half mark for the numbers, half mark for the answer, something like that. Number two. Launched at 28 meters per second. 58 degrees above the horizontal, I need to dulp. 28, 58 degrees above the horizontal. They want me to find Vx and Vy, hypotenuse, adjacent, opposite, uh, cos. 58 equals Vx over 28. So 28 cos 58 is going to be Vx. And I get 14.8377, uh, 14.8. Well, let's are they asking me to find stuff? They are. So I'm going to write here 14 point, I'll carry some extra digits, 14.8377. Here, I'm going to write 14.8 meters per second. If you went to more than three sig figs, I won't take marks off. If you didn't put units, I'll take a half mark off. Because anytime you're giving me an answer, a final answer, I want units. Which trig function is Vy going to be? I think Vy is going to be sine. Twenty three point seven four five three. And if I write that to two sig three sig figs, twenty three point seven meters per second. One mark for each of those. B. What's the maximum height? Okay, I'll have to do B down here. Height is vertical. So I'm using the t-table method, but rather than doing a complete t-table, Brian, I'm just going to do the vertical one here. I'm going to say, okay, Vy initial was 23.7453. Ay is negative 9.8. They want me to find dy. That's not enough. I need three things to find the fourth. What else do I know at the top? I heard someone say something, but I have no idea what it was. Yeah? Oh, Vy final is zero? Oh, cool. So I can use D equals Vf squared minus Vi squared all over 2a. The other thing I guess I could do if I wanted to do a longer method is I can use this, this, and this to find time to the top. And then once I know time to the top, I could use d equals v i t plus a half a t squared and get that. But I'm lazy. I want to get there in one step. Zero squared minus, haha, answer button squared divided by 2 times negative 9.8. Do you all get 
28.764, yes, no, yeah. 28.8 meters. If you got that, two out of two. Otherwise, I would probably give you uh, one mark if I saw that equation. And I don't know, I guess one mark for the answer. Did anybody find time first and then use that to find D? No one did? Okay. You did? Did you get the right answer? Okay, two out of two then. If you got the wrong answer, I would have showed you how to give part marks up for that method. But C. Now they want me to find time. I think I'm still going to find this vertically because I know VY initial is 23.74. Five, three. Now, many of you said VY final is zero. You find time to top and doubled it. I'm lazy. I'd like to get there in one fell swoop. I still know AY is negative 9.8. I know VY final when I hit the ground. What's VY final when I hit the ground? Negative 23.7453. And so I can use this, T equals VF minus VI over A. I've lost this stored. You know what? I'm lucky. On my calculator, I can backspace and bring up previous lines, and I'm so lazy. I'm going to do that, and now I've got that lovely vertical stored. But if you use 23.7453, our answer should match to at least four sig figs. But I'm going to go, okay. Uh, bracket negative answer button minus answer button divided by negative 9.8. Do you all get 4.8? Uh, I'll take 4.84 or 4.85. Depending on how you round it off, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you might have ended up with a number less than 5 right there and rounded then to the 4. I don't know. So I'm going to go 4.85. Is that right? 4.85 seconds? Once again, two out of two if you got that. Otherwise, I would give you one mark for that. I would give you a half mark for that and a half mark for the answer. Did anybody find time to top and then double it? You did? Got the right answer? Okay, then two out of two. But you did extra work. Just saying. Number three, find the resultant force R, and I see compass directions, so boy, I'm going to do this. It's not like I've ever made mistakes there. Draw a correct, oh, you can get one mark for the correctly labeled vector diagram. I want to add east plus south, so it's going to look something like this, east plus south, and that's 5, and that's 12. Okay, here's my vector triangle, 5. 12, and there's the force. That gets you one mark, or you could have gone like this, 12, 5, and there's, that's a 5, Mr. Duick, and there's the force. Either of those two triangles gets you one mark. Uh, for some reason, they ca I called it R for resultant. Okay, I'll use the same letter just so I'm consistent. R equals. Uh, so one mark for that. Magnitude is going to, oh, 13, yes? Works out evenly. Is it 13? Yeah, it's the 5, 12, 13 triangle. I spotted that. 13 newtons at, where is theta going to go in this triangle, top left or bottom right? Always where the vector is coming from, and it's opposite adjacent. Tan theta equals 12 over 5. Sixty-seven point four degrees. North of south, east of west, what of what? This is going to be south of east. Nice lines finish last. Uh, or twenty-two point six degrees east of south. How would I give out part marks here? I would give you one mark for the magnitude, half mark for the theta, half mark for the what of what. Number four was probably the toughest question. Now, what didn't appear on this take-home quiz? 
I didn't put a vector subtraction question on here. I'm thinking I should have. When did we use the vector subtraction question? When did we have to subtract vectors? I'll show you in just a second. Uh, we have an airplane traveling due east since I see compass directions. And since I've scrolled down, I'll do that again. There's a crosswind blowing. What's the plane's ground speed? So what we're using here is this. The engine speed plus the wind speed equals the ground speed, except it should be called the engine velocity plus the wind velocity equals the ground velocity, but they use the wrong terminology in flight, but I'll use their terminology. Um, this is also interchangeable for the river with uh, current. When might you subtract vectors? Um, Maybe if I ask you to find the engine speed, maybe if I tell you what direction and how big I want this to be, you would minus the wind over to get the engine by itself. Why is this question so tough? It's not a right angle triangle. Okay. Cross uh, plane is traveling 220 due east. Yoink. 80 meters per second, 30 degrees north of east. North of what? East. North of what? East. North of what? East. I'm going to draw east first. I'm going to go 30 degrees north of east. And that's 80. Now that 80 is at an angle. Did I say angle? You know what that's a job for? I'm going to break this 80 up. I'm going to break this 80 up into a horizontal and a vertical. And I think the horizontal ends up being cosine. So when I redraw this, I'm going to get 220 plus 80 cos 30, 69.282 plus, and the vertical ends up being 30. sine. And I think when you do that one, Martin, you get exactly 40, because I know the sine of 30 is 0.5. So the vertical ends up being 40. Why is that much nicer? Because these two I can add. Now, they're in the same direction, so I'll add them. What if they were in opposite directions? I would go winner minus loser, bigger minus smaller. But for now, I can draw this as, and I didn't really leave much room. I'm going to draw this, I think, over here. Uh, 220 plus 69.282. 289.282, so I'm going to have one line that is 289.282, and I'm going to add it tip to tail to the 40. My scale is terrible, but I'm at least close. I think long line, short line. Here is the ground velocity. How do I find the magnitude? Hey, it's going to be a job for Pythagoras. This number squared plus 40 squared equals square root. Do you get a magnitude of 292? Almost exactly. Meters per second at. Theta is going to go there. Opposite, adjacent. Hey, once again, it's tan theta equals 40 over 289.282. Do you get 7.9 degrees? 7.87, I'll go 7.9 degrees. North of south, east of west, what of what? I think that one is north of east. Or we would have 90 minus 7 is 83 minus 0.9, 82.1 degrees east of north. Now, this question for two marks, I, this would be 
and I think I told you earlier, but I'll repeat myself. On your tests, typically your written questions will be worth seven marks, so I can give out lots of part marks, and this really should be a seven mark question, because I would give out one mark if I saw that number right there. One mark if I saw that number right there. I'd probably give out one mark if I saw that vector triangle. I would give out one mark for that, one mark for that, one mark for that. But for now, for two marks, so for the correctly labeled vector diagram, I would say this. I would probably give you a half mark if I saw that number and a half mark if I saw that number. Did anybody use the cosine law and the sine law to do this? which most of you don't know, but you might have seen, okay? That was really for David. He might have seen that before, but that's okay. Uh, and then I would give uh, one mark for that, half mark for the angle, half mark for the what of what. Whew. Last one. Yeah, seven marks. This is what most of your written questions are going to be like. Seven. I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. Oh, I already told you, there's going to be one like this on your test. Cliff, at an angle, give you the height, find the range. Did I say angle? Components. I don't know why I keep using 30 degrees. I need to change that. I'll use a different angle. Anyways. Okay. I would break this up into VX and vy initial. I think you'll find that cosine of 30 equals vx over 20. And you find that it equals 17.3205. And I think you'll find that sine 30 equals vy initial over 20. I mean, this does work out nice. I think vy initial ends up being exactly 10. Time for a t-table. Ryan, ax equals? Yeah. ay equals negative 9.8. vx equals 17 point, what was it, 3205? The y initial equals 10. And then they gave me the height. Why is that wrong? Okay, negative 36. Now the other thing I could have done if I was nice is I could have given you this number right here. Then you would have three numbers in this column, three things in this column. Finding time is a piece of cake there because you don't end up with a quadratic. But I'm going to be mean. We want to find time. No, we don't. We want to find the range. Yeah, we're going to spend most of our time finding time. Okay. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Negative 36 equals 10T minus 4.9T squared. 4.9T squared minus 10T minus 36 equals zero. T equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. T equals... I have a solver on my personal calculator, so I'm totally going to cheat. It's called polysmult. Polynomial root finder. The degree is 2. A is 4.9. B is... Oh, careful, Mr. Duick negative 10, C is negative 36, solve. And I get a time value of 3.916642, dot, dot, dot. Or, you might have chosen to find VY final squared equals VY initial squared plus 2 a y d y you might have gone v f squared sorry don't need the squared anymore equals big square root of 10 squared plus 2 negative 9.8 negative 36 if i do that Ten squared plus two times negative nine point eight times negative thirty six. 
square root. You get 20, negative 28.383. Where'd the negative come from? I had to introduce it because I know we're going down. My calculator assumes I want the positive root. This time I want the negative root. Is that correct? Any of you that use this method? Am I right so far? No nods? We'll find out. T equals VF minus VI over A. So it's going to be negative answer button minus 10 over negative 9.8. Do I also get, hey, 3.91664222, 3.91664222, 3.91664222. I <sighs> haven't even come close to answering the question yet. What do they want me to find? Ah! VX was 17.3205. Time is 3.9166. So if I take that, time 17.3205. Do you all get a range of 67.8? Woo. Meters. If you got that, 7 out of 7. Otherwise, how would I give out part marks? So I would probably do something like this. I would probably give you one mark for that, one mark for that. That's two. I would give you a half mark if I saw that, and a half mark if I saw that. That's three. I would give you one mark for the answer. That's four. I would give you one mark if I saw this. That's five. Ryan, you going to make it? That's a long blink. I would give you one mark for time and this method and one mark if I saw it, or I would give you one mark for that and one mark for that. But no matter what, you could get seven marks. Can you give yourself a lovely score, please, out of 24? If you need to lawyer with me, now is the time. <laughs>